Welcome to Fairport Flash, the monthly economic update powered by the Fairport Investment Team. Our team gathers the most recent news, data, and research and distills it into the information most important to you. Let's get started. Welcome to Fairport Flash. My name is Rick D'Amico, Manager of Investments at Fairport Wealth. As a member of the investment team, my role centers around developing and implementing both the firm's fixed income and liquid alternative investment strategies. In this December edition of Fairport Flash, I'd like to discuss the avalanche of macro and policy news that's hit the markets over the past week, as well as some of the factors helping shape our economic and market outlook as we head into 2020. So let's get started. Last week, investors were flooded with a lot of key macro and policy news, including an FOMC meeting, the announced trade agreement between the United States and China, and the resolution of Brexit uncertainty with a victory for Boris Johnson in the UK election. Let's start with the FOMC meeting, which came in mostly in line with market expectations. The most significant change in the FOMC statement was the removal of the sentence previously stating that, quote, uncertainties about the global outlook remain. Some may interpret this as an increase in confidence among FOMC members that the global risks that have impacted the U.S. economy may be dissipating. At the press conference, Chairman Powell also made clear that the Fed is on hold and that it would take a significant change in their outlook to move rates in either direction. According to Roberto Prairley of Cornerstone Macro Research, the bar for cutting rates is high, but the bar for raising rates is extremely high, especially since it appears unlikely that inflation will run significantly above the Fed's 2% target anytime soon. According to the FOMC dot plot, or FOMC Participants' Assessments of Appropriate Monetary Policy, The Fed funds rate is expected to remain stable in 2020 before gravitating slightly higher in 2021 and 2022. Not one participant expected any additional cuts in the near future. The important takeaway is that with the market expecting the Fed to remain on hold, Fed policy in itself is unlikely to be a driver of Treasury yields in 2020. One other important note in regards to Fed policy. There's one school of thought that since 2020 is a presidential election year, it increases the odds that the Fed will remain on hold. There seems to be a perception that the Fed tends to stay on the sidelines during election years, letting the political process play out. Historically, this has not been the case. As going back to 1972, there has only been one election year in which the Fed did not take action, and that was in 2016. In every other election year, the Fed took action based on economic conditions, not politics. In three instances, the Fed actually tightened and eased in the same year. So judging by history, politics are unlikely to play a role in Fed policy decisions next year. So what impact could a stable Fed have on the markets in 2020? According to Ned Davis Research, stocks do tend to rally after a third rate cut. 2020 represents months 3 through 15 after the third rate cut, and the S&P 500 has gained on average 7.6% over that time period. However, assuming no additional rate cuts, there is also a risk that the impact of the stimulus will begin to fade by the second half of 2020, as much of the liquidity provided by the previous cuts will have already worked its way through the financial system. Moving on to the latest trade agreement between the U.S. and China, Dan Clifton from Strategus Research summarizes it best as trust but verify. As many of the details remain foggy, and as Mr. Clifton points out, We have been down this road before with trade agreements announced in May and December of 2018 and in June and October of 2019. We probably won't receive more clarity on the deal until it is signed in early January and released to the public, but the most important aspect of this deal appears to be the willingness of the U.S. to reduce or roll back existing tariffs, which should make China more willing to compromise on purchases of farm goods and commitments on intellectual property. A finalized trade agreement will be a key in helping to remove the black cloud of uncertainty that has hurt capital expenditures in the U.S. How will these recent policy developments affect interest rates in the fixed income markets? Roberto Perley of Cornerstone Macro notes that both the trade deal and Brexit resolution could provide a tailwind for U.S. rates, pushing the 10-year closer to his target range of 2.25%. Our view is that interest rates gravitate slightly higher from their current level, 1.89%, but remain mostly range-bound with inflation in check and the Fed on hold in 2020. With low rates and a stable economy, credit conditions do remain favorable for corporate bonds. However, from a valuation standpoint, credit spreads are at the tights for the year, and the spread between B single A and B double A bonds is near a record valuation level and the tightest spread level since 2005. 
We are entering a seasonally strong period for the high yield bond market. However, with valuations already stretched and the likelihood that rates remain range bound, we have modest return expectations for fixed income in 2020. Let's focus on the equity markets now. The U.S. stock market, as represented by the S&P 500 index, entered December 2019 with a gain of 24.2% year to date. If these gains hold, this would be the third best gain this century. Whether or not such strong gains can continue is a reason cited by some investors as a concern. But as Ed Hyman, chief economist at Evercore ISI, points out, the current bull market may be chronologically old in terms of 11 years, but economically it is more middle-aged as a number of current market metrics still remain favorable when compared to the ends of previous bull markets. For instance, the current Fed funds rate at 1.75% is very low in comparison to the 6.5% rate at the end of the last longest expansion, which happens to be the 1990s bull market. Valuations are also more reasonable, as today's PE multiple on trailing earnings is 19 times versus 30 times in 2000. At that time, Brent crude was also surging from $10 per barrel to $35, and housing starts were sinking from $1.8 million to $1.5 million. So looking at these metrics, this expansion may have more room to run. Evercore ISI is also expecting faster-than-consensus GDP growth of 2.5% versus 1.9% in 2020, primarily due to the acceleration we've seen in consumer net worth and the sharp drop in mortgage rates. This is important because better-than-expected economic growth could lead to better-than-expected earnings growth in 2020. And finally, one of my favorite indicators this time of year, Evercore ISI's Christmas Tree Sales Survey is off to its best two-week start on record, increasing 23% and 16% respectively over the first two weeks. Historically, this survey has been highly correlated with retail sales growth, which points to a strong holiday shopping season. What can we expect from the equity markets in 2020 and election year? According to Ned Davis Research, the S&P 500's average post-war election year return is 6.7%. The market also tends to be choppy in the first half of election years before finishing stronger in the second half. The choppy first half is typically attributed to election uncertainty. So if the election ends up being tightly contested, you could see some of this choppiness persist into the second half of 2020. Other potential downside risks that could develop in 2020 would include a more hawkish Fed or slower global economic growth. Investor sentiment is also elevated headed into 2020, which tends to be a more bearish signal as well. Upside factors that could influence equity market returns next year include an end to the trade war, a stable or dovish Fed, and early clarity around the election outcome. This brings us to the close of today's Fairport Flash. As a reminder, our goal at Fairport is inspiring families, and as a member of the investment team, we strive to do so through a long-term, diversified approach. If you would like to discuss any of today's general topics in more detail, please reach out to your Fairport team. From everyone in the Fairport family, we would like to wish you a wonderful holiday season and a happy new year. We are truly grateful for the trust you have instilled in us and cherish the relationships we have continued to develop over the past year. Thank you for listening and look for the next Fairport Flash in January of 2020. Fairport is a group of investment professionals registered with Hightower Securities, LLC, a member of FINRA and SIPC, and with Hightower Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor with the SEC. Securities are offered through Hightower Securities, LLC. Advisory services are offered through Hightower Advisors, LLC. This is not an offer to buy or sell securities. No investment process is free of risk, and there's no guarantee that the investment process or the investment opportunities referenced herein will be profitable. Past performance is not indicative of current or future performance, and is not a guarantee. The investment opportunities referenced herein may not be suitable for all investors. All data and information referenced herein are from sources believed to be reliable. Any opinion, news, research, analysis, prices, or other information contained in the research is provided as a general market commentary. It does not constitute as investment advice. Airport and Hightower shall not be in any way liable for claims and make no express or implied representations or warranties as to the accuracy or completeness of the data and other information, or for statements and errors contained in or omissions from the obtained data and information referenced herein. The data and information are provided as of the date referenced. Such data and information are subject to change without notice. This document was created for informational purposes only. The opinions expressed are solely those of Fairport and do not represent those of Hightower Advisors LLC or any of its affiliates.